other world. opens 100 right fast at junction 100 easy right fast and jump 100 easy right Old mates uh, Roger Clark and Tony Mason in the works to, to reliving their experiences of 1972 when they won the Lombard RAC rally and set in motion incidentally an eight year domination by Ford. Those were indeed the days. We're at Chatsworth Park in the Peak District. Uh, it's foggy, uh, but very uh, brisk morning here. The estates of the Duke of Devonshire provide the setting for stages three and four of this year's rally. Stage three is close to spectators. We're covering stage four live with our cameras. They opened the gates, would you believe, at six o'clock this morning, and since then the spectators have been flooding in. Before the cars arrive, let me briefly outline the shape of the entire event for you. Five days, 1,900 miles in all to cover, 375 of those being on the special stages. On days one and two, the cars were in the east and west Midlands and in the forests of Wales with an overnight stop in Telford. On the second day, they've got 14 hours driving, 15 special stages to contend with, so a real toughie there. On days three and four, the cars turn north up to the Lake District, southern Scotland, Northumberland, overnights in Carlisle and in Newcastle, almost 100 special stage miles in the giant Kielder Forest, most of those in the dark. And on the fifth and final day, the cars turn south uh, to cross the North Yorkshire Moors, back to the finishing line in Nottingham. OK, so who's going to win? Well, if only we knew. Certainly a battle royal developing between the Japanese cars, the Toyotas, Mazdas and Mitsubishis, Seven of those in the top ten seeds this year, four being driven by former world champions. Well, the cars crossed the start line sharp at 7.45 this morning. The lead car, the two-litre two Toyota, being driven by Juha Kankinen, twice world champion, very fast, very safe, somewhat caught out by the conditions on this stage, but despite the aberration, still strongly tipped to win this year's rally. His last outing for Toyota before he goes back to his old mates uh, at Lancia the fastest time on the stage, incidentally, driven by Carlos Sainz. Right, that really brings us to stage four here at uh, Chatsworth. 1.6 miles, tarmac and gravel across the park, two surprises up its sleeve, a water splash that could really take the steam out of the unwary, and a jump, or a yump, as the aficionados like to call it. Certainly a lump larger than a sleeping policeman. We're certainly going to see uh, machinery getting airborne today. Our commentators, Tony Mason and Richard Hudson Evans in the uh, commentary box uh, with their microphones at the ready and all the stories behind the headlines. And meanwhile, back at the control centre in Nottingham, we've got uh, Alan Douglas from BBC Scotland who can keep us up to date with all the latest positions on the leaderboard. Let me briefly mention Barry Gill, uh, longer contributor, of course, to uh, Rally Report, taken away very suddenly because of family illness. Uh, we wish all the very best to Barry and his family. Right, here we are at Chatsworth, stage four, live. Over to our commentators, Tony Mason and Richard Hudson-Evans. Thank you, William. And on the line, Ewa Kankinen with Ewa Peronen in the Toyota Celica GT4. At the moment, second overall after the first three stages, Kankinen in the works Toyota. The seconds counting away, and away he goes, down the stage, rocketing, rocketing along in the four-wheel drive Toyota, number one, the favourite to win, the moment one second down in second place behind David Llewellyn. This stage is very interesting actually, it's 1.6 miles, the first half of it is loose gravel, undulating as you can see, and this is the trickiest part, then it really gets very fast down the main straight of the drive of the house here at Chatsworth into the, uh, into the water and the jumps that William mentioned. Nasty, very tight gate here, you'll see somebody clobbering that before the day's out, I'm quite sure. This is a real monster to control, gets up to 100 miles an hour in nine seconds, six forward gears, hardly time to uh, use the clutch. In fact, he doesn't need to, apart from going away from the line. Ewa Kankinen having his last drive for the Toyota team, onto the tarmac now, really opening it up. 300 brake horsepower to play with, and he's using all of them. 
And Kankinen really probably is the best rally driver in the world at the moment. Twice world champion, one probably one of the last of the great flying Finns because now we've got lots of new Latin drivers coming in. He's along. achieved 99. 99. Miles an hour. 99 miles an hour through the speed trap. And now breaking it down really savagely onto a very narrow bit. Looking out very carefully for those large stones which could take a wheel off and give him a puncture. He's already had one puncture on the previous stage. Driving cautiously but quickly. Kankinen at the moment only one second down in second place behind rally leader David Llewellyn. Toyota's filling the first four places through the splash. Very fast. And now they're coming into a fast left over the... Um... Oh, a lovely piece of low flying there. Aviating. Did you know, Richard, that Juha Kankinen has bought a farm and he's got his own forest, a, a five-acre forest, and he practices in Finland? Well, it's obviously paying off. Into the finish, safely through those solid uh, bridge parapets there and over the line. So we've had there... And a time of 150, I think. 150, averaging 53 miles an hour for Juha Kankinen on this stage. 150 is the time to beat on this stage. And trying to beat it right now, in number two, the... Mitsubishi, Harry Vattenen and Bruno Berglund. The Mitsubishi Gallant VR4, not only four-wheel drive like the Toyota, but with four-wheel steering as well. Vattenen and Berglund for Mitsubishi, chasing Kankinen's time. Let's see how he does. Mitsubishi had their first World Championship victory in August this year when Michael Eriksson uh, won for the Middle Thousand Lakes. Harry Button, and obviously one of the most popular drivers, the po most popular Finn. He lives in England, of course, and very, very popular. World champion, used to drive for Peugeot, had an amazing accident uh, a few years ago. Thankfully, recovered very well, and he's still back in absolute top form. Down the fastest part of the stage. The four-wheel steering, by the way, only works over 40 miles an hour. He's certainly doing well over that now, sweeping into our speed trap. Let's see what he does. 99 miles an hour is what Kankin had achieved. 91 miles now, quite a bit slower, quite a bit slower. This car is much heavier than the Toyota, of course, Richard, and uh, no, it's quite a hard car to drive, although it's very rugged and very, uh, very substantial. He had a good performance in the uh, car on last year's event, although he went out with engine failure. The time to beat, 1.50 on the left-hand side now. We'll see what he's doing. Clock ticking away, heading for the splash. Let's hope they've got their electric sorted out. You may remember what happened to the works Vauxhalls in Western Park when they went through our splash and over the brow goes Vattenen and Berglund. The Mitsubishi just soaking up that bump, making very short work of it. Watch the time. One, he's now at the same time as, Ka as Kankinen. Yes, a little bit slower. And four seconds slower. 1.55, in fact. Five seconds slower. Five seconds slower there. Vattenen from Kankinen. And now it's Carlos Sainz, the Matador, the Spanish rally star in the works Toyota. Same uh, car as we've seen Kankinen use, prepared in Germany by Toyota Team Europe. Again, four-wheel drive with his co-driver, Louis Moyer. Ludwig, the German mechanics, call him in Toyota number three. Now, Carlos is probably one of the most exciting drivers on this event. He's been here twice before, had very good results with Ford, seventh and eighth in the previous two years. Last year in the snow was amazing in the two-wheel drive Cosworth. He is one of the new generation of rally drivers that I was talking about. Uh, Mediterranean Latin driver. When he was 16, he was the uh, Spanish squash champion. By the time he was 24, he was their rally champion, and in fact, he's been champion for three years. Exciting driver. Mickey Biazzi, on the world champion, was telling me that he reckons this guy is the greatest driver in the world. And um, for, for what it's worth, my money's on Carlos to give us a very big surprise win this year, Richard. And the potential world champion, I would have thought, as he goes to the speed trap at 99 miles an hour, exactly the same uh, speed as set up there by Kankinen, same car, the Matador really charging through this stage, round the Duke of Devonshire's stately driveways, a little bit quicker than the tourist traffic in the summer. Carlos Sainz. Sainz and Moyer. Remember, he was 8th in 87, 7th last year, splashing away there, and heading now for the jump. This is going to be a quick time, because he was a couple of seconds quicker there into the water splash than um, the new Hakankunen. Lights ablaze, really flying along. Had a victory, uh, his first for Toyota last month in the Canary Islands. So he's in the winning groove. And his
his time 154. So second quickest, Kankinen first quickest, Saints second quickest, Vattenen third quickest. So far, non-stop entertainment for the large crowds here, now being provided by number four, Timo Salonen and Voito Cylinder in the works Mazda 323, another Japanese car with four-wheel drive. Timo, of course, was second last year, a very good performance on the snow and ice, uh, a very, very good driver, very quiet. I mean, he doesn't look like a rally driver, he wears glasses and he smokes and he enjoys the odd drink and so on, so he's not your typical uh, rally driver, but in fact, he's a magnificent driver, world champion, of course, um, and he had a tremendous drive last year, and I think we could see another one because he's in a very good frame of mind. Since joining Mazda, he's not really had the results. He won the Swedish for them a couple of years ago, but um, he is a very confident driver, although he's sort of not actually displaying it at that moment. That was a really bad tow <laughs> operation. And I hope he didn't clobber that nasty stone there because that will have done a bit of damage. Yes, lost some time there, my goodness me. He won't be happy. And uh, no doubt the atmosphere in there will be a bit tense as they go through the fastest part of the course. Remember, 99 miles an hour is our speed trap time. 93 miles an hour for Mazda, a little less powerful than the Toyota, really locking up the brakes there and only just managing yeah. to uh, get round the sharp left at the end. It seems to me, of course, that in fact, if they have wrecking, they practice these uh, spectator stages, uh, but I think they've got the settings wrong on that car because he obviously was set up for the gravel, and as soon as he got onto the tarmac, he's having problems on the, on the bends, as you can see. They can adjust the braking bias from the front to the back as he splashes through there. Master of Salomon, second on a thousand lakes in August. The car has won two uh, internationals, including Clark Carlson at the wheel, so it, it is a winner. Landed very heavily there. Only 1800 uh, cc's, of course, which is very much down on power uh, to the Toyotas. And unlike the Toyota, Salonen can't adjust the drive bias from the front wheels to the back wheels. He can only adjust the brakes. So that was Salonen. Ericsson's already flying down towards Chatsworth House, down this narrow, bumpy track on the estate. Normally used for farming, this road. Certainly some high-speed motoring going on here this morning. Kenneth Ericsson, a very underrated driver, actually. Uh, when he was driving Group A, he drove VW, the first driver to win a World Championship uh, rally uh, in a two-wheel drive car with the VW. He won the Ivory Coast Rally. Um, he is a very good driver indeed hasn't had a happy time with Toyota as they've been developing this car over the last couple of years. And in fact, uh, after this rally, he's now moving to Mitsubishi. But Kenneth Eriksson from Sweden is probably um, you know, one, of the, uh, one of the very best Scandinavians going now. Set the car up beautifully there, didn't he, to go through there. Really neat. Flicks it the other way, gets the car perfectly lined up with all four wheels doing their work. He has lots of controls in there. You can adjust the brake balance. 92 miles an hour through the speed track. Quite a bit slower than Kankinen and the Saints. Yeah, he'll put the handbrake on now as he goes into this uh, hairpin left. And in fact, when the, hairpin, when, when the handbrake comes on, it disconnects the four-wheel uh, drive. So it uh, operates like a two-wheel drive car, which is an amazing bit of uh, development. This is the most high-tech of the, uh, the rally cars. At the moment, the leaderboard has Toyotas in the first four places. Oh, this back. Very quick time, uh, Richard, there. 129 into that water splash. Let's so see how he flies and lands. Could be nearly as quick as Kankan on this one. Last year, you remember, he retired on the first stage, 20 yards on the first stage. So we'd like to see a nice result for Kenneth Erickson. His time. 151. So that makes Kenneth Erickson there the second quickest. That's interesting. He's quite a bit slower through the speed trap. But Kankinen still leads by one second on this stage. Now the great grand old man of rallying, as they call him, Hanu Mikola. Marvellous Hanu, won everything ever worth winning in the world. The first European driver to win the Safari Rally, won the London-Mexico Rally in 1970, won the London uh, to Hong Kong Peking Rally, you name it, Hanu has won it. 18 World Championship wins out of uh, 109 or whatever that he's competed in. Very experienced, very fast, still enjoying his rallying immensely. Driving with Mazda, hasn't won a rally for them, but very nearly won last year when he was leading, took over the lead from Kankan and went out on the last day and was literally blinded by the sun and went off the road. Could still have won it, but the gear connection, the gear linkage broke, and that was Hanu out. But uh, very good on this event, of course. He's won it four times and had uh, four second places, would you believe, in eight consecutive years. Here's our 
helicopter eye view of one of the greatest rally drivers of all time, Hannu Mikkola, the most successful on this event. Four wins, 94 miles an hour through the speed trap. 94 miles, still the Toyota the quickest. Mazda, less powerful, but a nimble little package. And now, going through the narrowest part, cautiously making sure he gets no punctures. Once uh, two seconds behind Ericsson at the water splash on his time, so this isn't going to be a bad time at all. And a long way to go. 1.50 the time to beat. Kankinen the quickest on the stage. Kankinen, Ericsson, Saints Batman, that's the leaderboard on this stage. His time 1.55, so five seconds slower than Kankinen. Mikula, fifth quickest on the stage. Malcolm Wilson now starting and scurrying down the track towards stately Chatsworth. Malcolm, of course, is our only A-seeded driver. That means that he's, uh, he's ranked in the top group in world rallying. He was third in New Zealand, which gave him this uh, seeding. Very fast driver, uh, lives in Branthwaite, Cumbria. Uh, very, very popular with all the British uh, rally followers, of course. Driving the two-wheel drive uh, car here, the highest uh, starting number for a two-wheel drive car. Obviously, he's got his work cut out to get up into the top half a dozen or so, because the two-wheel drive is obviously a disadvantage. But uh, I think we'll see a good result from Malcolm, and he drives with an immense uh, Umbria's rally star. Our top seeded driver. Didn't uh, do that very neatly, though. Lost a couple of seconds there, I reckon. On notes, of course, they have been able to practice these first day stages. The rest of the rally, though, will be unseen when it comes to the forest. Traditional unseen stages, but not here. Through the speed trap, 92 miles an hour for the little Vauxhall Castro GTE 16 bar. With only two wheel drive. And that means he'll be struggling where it's slippery. Well, uh, best RAC Lombard finish for Sliding round there, a little bit more cautiously than uh, the last sharp bend. And, of course, safely through the splash with much relief. If you may remember, Derek Bell stopping in the Ford at Western Park. Vauxhall making quite sure their cars will go through rally puddles from now on. And over the line, 202, only two wheel drive, and 12 seconds slower than Kankinen, quickest on the stage. Number nine coming down the stage now, England with the driver, another of the works masters, along with Saladin and Mikola. Here's the third one, Ingvar Carlsen, the Swede, who's notched up two World Rally Championship wins this season in Sweden and in New Zealand. Uh, Ingvar and uh, Per Carlsen, no relation, incidentally. Carlsen is uh, rather like Smith in, uh, in England, he's a Swede. Um, Ingvar and Per Carlsen, very successful. Ingvar is the quiet man of rallying, he's a sort of poor relation in the team, really, because uh, former world champions Hanno and uh, Hanno Mikkel and Timo Salonen are uh, leading the team. But in fact, um, it's Carlsen that has notched up the wins, as you say, you know, in uh, New Zealand and Sweden. Yes, the Therefore, the most successful driver in the team, and possibly the most underrated. Carlson and Carlson in the Mazda, 91 miles an hour, a little bit slower than his uh, teammates, Salonen and Mikola, but neatly around that sharp corner at the end. Flame coming out of the exhaust there. He has actually competed in 34 World Championship rallies and won two of them, which isn't too bad a record, really, is it? Oh, so experienced. And underrated. Could well be there at the end. Could cause a few surprises. The leaderboard being dominated by the Toyotas, though, at the moment, as he lands there safely, bouncing along. Not so heavily as uh, Salonen on the landing in the same car. 
Could there be some radio information going between the team cars, I wonder? Maybe. And the way his reversing lights are coming on, incidentally, but we'll find out. Seven seconds slower than Kankin and though. Carlson, six fastest on the stage. We're now seeing the second of the General Motors cars. This one for the Euro team being driven by Sepp Heider, hotelier and rally driver from Austria. He is from Austria, but in actual fact, his greatest achievement this year was winning the German Championship because they don't do too much rallying in Austria apparently now. Uh, but however, he is the German champion. Very competent driver indeed. His greatest win was winning New Zealand in 88. He won the New Zealand Rally of World Championship event. He's co driven by Mike Nicholson, who in fact uh, runs the motorsport team at GM Vauxhall. Very, very competent co driver who's been with McRae and Arickel and Pond and everybody over the years. And of course, uh, his greatest claim to fame was going with Derek Bell last year and um, helping him to sort of drive into the car park side, as we may all remember. <laughs> biggest on the stage, Kankinen. Ericsson, second biggest. Saints, third quickest. Battenham, fourth. Nicola, fifth. Carlson six. That's the leaderboard on this stage. Hanging in from Ericsson by a second. 150 the time to beat. From the drive only. Turning onto the twisty little track. These cars prepared in Milton Keynes for forays all over Europe. Now, Malcolm Wilson in the Vauxhall was 1.38 at the water, so he, in fact, is a second, two seconds behind him, so it looks as though Seth will be a couple of seconds down on Malcolm on this stage. Wilson's time, oh, that was a heavy landing, 2.02. Wilson's time, 2.02. And at the moment, the best of the two-wheel drive times, 2.02. <laughs> Block 201, 202, 203, and 203, ninth quickest on the stage, Sepp Heider. Eklund flying down the stage now. Per Eklund with uh, Cedarberg, his uh, co-driver, normally Blomqvist co-driver, the captain, sitting beside him. Very experienced combination in a privately run Lancia. The works cars staying away, having already sewn up the championship this year. This will be one of the leading hopes for the Italian manufacturer. Eklund, always so good on this event. And we're looking forward to seeing another stirring performance from one of the most popular drivers of all, Ecker Eklund. Very, very experienced driver. He's been uh, 43 years of age now, been driven in, uh, driving in rallies for so long. And he's actually driven 12 different types of cars since 1973 in World Championship events. I was calculating the other day. He drove the tiny Nissan last year on this rally. You remember? Won the Swedish rally for Saab. He was one of the original Saab works drivers in the great days of the Saabs. Second on the Swedish, the first round of the World Rally Championship. Enormous crowds, as you can see. This uh, stage. Just over one and a half miles of it, lined with spectators. Been here since the very early morning to get a good position. Eklund splashing through the woods. The four-wheel drive of privately run Lancia Delta HF Integrale. This, of course, is the car that has mopped up the World Rally Championship this year. Yazion, the champion, and Lancia, the winning manufacturer in the World Championship. 154, four seconds uh, slower than Kankinen, but still a good performance there for Eklund, a privately run car, remember, and he is third equal on this stage with Carlos Sainz in the works Toyota. Now we have uh, Jorg Ricaldi, uh, one of the uh, great world stars of rallying, the Argentinian driver who has been campaigning the Group N car uh, previously and now he's into the Group A lance here, financed from his home country and actually sponsored by his uh, local town, Cordoba, that's where, where he comes from. Jorg Ricaldi actually won the Argentine rally last year, so um, a very uh, popular ACD driver. Calde, seeing whether he can uh, get to grips with that very quick time by Eklund. 
Eklund, 30 cool at 154. 154 is the top Lancia time to beat. And this is certainly not the way to beat it. An interesting uh, diversion there for the Argentinian. Doing a little gardening here at Chatsworth and losing a little time. Lights and legs. Can he make it up? Down the fastest part of the course through these sweeps. Through our speed trap. Let's see what he does. 94 miles an hour. 94 miles an hour to the Argentinian champ. Argentina, of course, is motorsport mad, of course, uh, probably emanating from the great days of uh, Juan Manuel Fangio. Um, he is the star here. Lord Ricardi is the star of Argentina. Very, very popular superhero. When he won the rally, and I think about 100,000 people were in the stadium when he won that rally, and it was uh, just like the previous pop concert. Through the splash, heading for the, the jump. Eklund's time, 1.54. Let's see what he can do. Nice landing. Already he's behind Kankanen and Eklund's time has gone through now. Early days though. Only the fourth of many stages. 203. 203, that's uh, 13 seconds slower for the Argentinian. And now Aricola. Penti Aricola with Ronan McNamee in the second of the works Mitsubishi Gallant VR4s. We've seen Ari Vatanen. And now having a one-off drive is the driver who's done so well in the British Open Championship in a Group N version of this car. This is a Group A works car. Is 45-year-old Penti Aricola. Really knows how to exploit this uh, very interesting technical package. Four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, just like Vatnan's car. Aricola having a one-off drive. Ericsson, that's uh, Kenneth Ericsson, been signed up for the second Mitsubishi seat next year alongside Vatnan. But a tremendous performance you may remember last year by Aricola in the Lancia Delta, which he ran as a private entry through the fastest part of the course, 95 miles an hour. That's going some. Last year, on the very last day, a string of faster stage times brought him up to fourth overall in the Lancia. Now, this car, of course, what, uh, has our in-car camera in it, and we may well be seeing the results of Penty's drive on this event. We really think that Penty's going to have a good run on this rally. He's, uh, he's very relaxed, he's looking for a good result. Driving the Group A car is no different to driving the Group N car, he says. Another top driver who wears specs. Is interesting. Any landing there, still. It was I'm a very sure fast time. built to stand up to it. Very fast time indeed, 1.50, the fastest time on the stage. Look, very, very close to it, 1.49, 1.50, only just behind, though. And his time, 1.53, the third quickest time on the stage. So Kankanen quickest in the Toyota from Ericsson, and then Aricola is third. Now, the rally leader before this stage was this driver, David Llewellyn. The crowd really getting very enthusiastic about him. David Llewellyn, the current British Open champion in the British-prepared Toyota Celica GT4. The works Toyotas, the other ones are all prepared in Germany, of course, by Uwe Anderson's team in Cologne. Phil Short from Yorkshire beside him, reading those pace notes and going down the stage now towards the house and through the gate posts, we hope, safely. So David, in fact, he really has the best chance of any British driver since Roger Clark to actually do well on this event. And uh, Roger's rec great record, the only British driver in the last 30 years to win this rally, could go this year with David. And in fact, he's in, in a very good frame of mind. He's won the British Open Championship. This event doesn't count for that. He's nice and relaxed. David is going to go well. He was second fastest on the first stage, fastest on the second one before here. And he's probably now... Uh, really doing exactly what he planned to do, which was to get himself in the first five by the time they get to Telford tonight. Through the speed trap. Into the tricky part of the course. Llewellyn and Short, British Open champions. This car prepared for Toyota by the Phil Collins workshops. So uh, a real British effort, this. And our best chance here in Britain 
of a home win. Uh, that was a cheering fast there. over the jump, but in fact he's slower at this point now than uh, the works Toyotas from Europe, than Kankinen and Sainz. Yes, and slower.